it's so hard nowadays with all the gangs and rap music. What about robots? Oh, they are everywhere. I don't even know why the scientists make them. Darren and I have a policy with Old Glory Insurance that covers us in case we're attacked by robots. And you guys, I, I can't take it anymore. Like, I can't fucking take it. I am at my breaking point in the best possible way. Uh, I swear to God, it's like, I haven't even put out, like, I've filmed like three or four videos, but since i filmed filmed the videos of these, like, check out this new band, and then there's like all these other new fucking bands to check out, and I, I need to go find me a fucking, a second brain transplant so I can process all of this stuff to give to you guys. Uh, I just, it's, it's a fucking overload, it really honestly is, and... Um, and I mean, it's fine, because, you know, some days I put out, like, three videos in a row, and there were, like, two days there where I didn't put out videos, so I, I'm gonna roll them out on, like, some kind of a daily format. Like, I'm gonna film a shitload of them when I can. I'll film seven or eight in a row, if I can just fucking do it. Because I definitely have the content. The content is not the problem. Like, it may seem strange that I can pump out all this content, but it, that's not the fucking problem. Like, I, I had so much stuff thrown at me that it's not a problem. It's, it's not really a matter of content, it's just a matter of, of the time to, to actually make the stuff, so... I can turn a camera on and run my stupid fucking mouth really easy. It's not hard for me, if you can't tell, like, 40 videos in after three weeks of, of channel. Uh, anyway, I need to get to the point here. So, I just found a band this morning, and it was such an accidental thing. I was just doing my normal morning routine of, you know, getting up, doing my morning, like, yoga and shit, and then I get my shower and I eat my breakfast, and then... Uh, I've subscribed to a lot of like record labels on this channel so I can kind of see this new stuff as it comes out um, Some stuff. I don't know where the where the fuck it comes from because I don't even think this band's on a record label They might be they might be like self-recorded. I'm not really sure. Uh, I hope to hear from these guys um, Anyway, I overlooked it because the name threw me off I think this doesn't sound like something I'm gonna like and I saw the video clip and I'm like Jesus Christ here we go again uh, another one of these just kind of stereotypical industrial bands, but I had time, I'm eating my burrito, I throw the thing on, and holy shit, uh, we are saved, we are fucking saved, I have waited since the day that, that was announced that Cyberbeat broke up, that, you know, I was like, what the fuck am I going to do, because nobody really has that style to that level that Cyberbeat does, and while my reaction may be a little premature, I, I feel pretty strong on it, because since I've heard this band, I've been listening to them all day, today, as I do my stuff, uh, and I feel like I've really stumbled upon something special here. Um, now, I need to kind of go back from the beginning, from the beginning here, as far as, like, my history as a music fan, and the specific style. Um, I really feel like the kind of industrial metal stuff has been my home genre, if you will, uh, because it combines two things that I care very deeply about, which is electronic music and metal. Um, and this history goes clear back to the 90s. Holy shit, some of you guys weren't even fucking born then. I'm old as fuck. Surprise! Uh, anyway, back in the 90s, you know, in school, we would trade CDs sometimes. And I can't remember what the fuck I traded a CD of for this kid, and I think it was my math class, because he had the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. And I really wanted the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. The very first Mortal Kombat soundtrack was such a good soundtrack. I found so many good bands from that soundtrack. Go hunt that soundtrack down. It has Fear Factory. It has Typo Negative. It has Napalm Death. It has, I think, KMFDMs on it. Uh, and on and on and on. Uh, Gravity Kills might have been on it. I don't know. But it was like it was like one of those, you know, that was the, the quote-unquote good old days of the industrial slash metal slash whatever the fuck it is was getting pumped out from like wax tracks and all those different labels that jumped on that hype train and thankfully they did because man that was such a good fucking soundtrack that introduced me to so many bands that I care so deeply about today. <sighs> anyway, on that soundtrack there was a band called Fear Factory that I had never heard of and I knew nothing about but it just caught me and it was crazy because I might have been exposed to harsh vocals at that age. I can't remember or not what was my first harsh vocal exposure, but that was at least one of my first, if it wasn't the first. It's debatable trying to remember whether it was Six Feet Under or Fear Factory were my first introduction to growling vocals. Um, I don't count White Zombie in that, even though White Zombie is definitely an industrial band, which formed a lot of my feelings on music. Uh, 
Um, but the first one that really grabbed me was like my, an obsession was Fear Factory, and the song on that soundtrack was Zero Signal. And I remember listening to that song over and over and over and over and over, trying to wrap my head around it because I had such a harsh, I had such a hard time with the harsh vocals that I, but I love the other parts of the, of the music. I love the kind of galloping triplets that they were doing on the, on the fucking drums. And, and the clean vocals were just to die for. It was ironic because live, at that time at least, Burton was a shitty singer. But um, he really brought it on the CD. Like, his baritone vocals uh, at that time were just so fucking good. Um, but, you know, I listened to it over and over until it was like, I finally, like, I, the, the harsh vocals clicked for me. And that's the thing, for people who don't like music with harsh vocals, that's what you have to understand, is it kind of has to click. You have to understand it. Uh, if you don't understand it, you're not going to like it. Because people who... The best way I could explain harsh vocals to someone who does not listen to heavy stuff is, from a musician's perspective, the harsh vocals take the form of a percussive device in the music. They fill in the same way that bass does, and bass playing and the drums fill in, they fill this. They have a rhythmic purpose. They don't have a melodic purpose. If you understand that in the musical structure, it won't be so off-putting to you if you truly get it here. And that's what I did over listening to it over and over. I understood harsh vocals. And it changed my life, you know, because music is my life. And, and that one song, that one fucking song, changed my life. And that band definitely dug its way into 15 to 20 years of my life after. Um, but, you know, they were one of one of the first. I mean, they weren't the first. I could go, I could fucking do an hour seminar on industrial metal and go off about shit like Ministry and, and White Zombie and everything else that came before it. But that's where I started. That was my foot getting dipped into the pool of industrial metal uh, and Fear Factory is a huge influence to a lot of the bands that I'm going to discuss moving forward after this because Fear Factory has had a couple of ebbs and flows since, or since then they've broken up a couple times uh, they are currently in a rise right now because in my opinion Genexus is a phenomenal album uh, Burton seems to have taken some fucking vocal lessons because I saw him live last he sounded really good singing now finally awesome happy for you dude I hope you guys continue forward uh, so right now they're they're at a good part they're a good spot, you know, it's cool. But you know, in their in their valleys, a couple bands were like seeing that hole that was left, and then they filled in that hole with the style. And, and the style of Fear Factory has taken the electronics because the history of this band comes from, you know, these guys like Dino and Raymond, and you know they were really big into the death metal scene. And I don't know exactly how they got like hooked up, if you will, but it was a combination of those two. And Burton was a big fan of stuff like Godflesh, another really early influential proto-industrial band that you need to know about. It was really big into Godflesh, which had this electronic stuff and this kind of heavier sound. And then somehow, I don't know where the fuck he came from, Reese Fulber, which is from Frontline Assembly, another band you need to know about from the history of industrial metal, came in there and he's like, I'm going to work with you guys and we're going to make this shit happen. And they did, and, they, and they, I think they're still, to this point, working together in some way. They may not, I don't know. But they're for a long fucking time of Fear Factory's history. You know, a very influential part of the sound came from Reese Fulber and Frontline Assembly, mixing his industrial, just industrial, with their metal, making industrial metal one fused genre, which influenced so many fucking bands. That was one of the first bands in death metal that was like, we're going to mix the harsh vocals with clean vocals. Before that fucking trendy metalcore bullshit, years and years and years before the fucking metalcore trend, we had clean vocals in death metal. And it didn't mean that the music was pussy back then. It was a different thing, guys. Different thing for a different time. And there's still a lot of bands these days that have, that are great to have heavy vocals and clean vocals. And it's good, but people can't understand it because the only thing they know about is metalcore. But no, but fucking Fear Factory was one of the first ones. He did that and he did it right. He did shit right from day one. So, Fear Factory had its ebbs and flows. And some bands came in, those little valleys, and they filled in. And there were many bands to speak of that have done this over the years, in my opinion. They may not even recognize their role in it. But one of the first ones that kind of had that style to me that I recognized was Nemic. M-N-E-M-I-C. Menemic, whatever the fuck you say it. Uh, they've come and gone. They broke up. They did some good albums. Everybody loved the earlier shit. I loved it all. I actually really liked the later stuff. It was really cool. Especially the last album, Nemesis great fucking album because they almost had like a, a proto gent meets Alice in Chains kind of sound to it like if you listen to his cleans he really has kind of a Lane Staley feel to it N another video for another day but Nemic was one of the first ones that kind of took that sound and kind of elevated it back up a little bit and that was cool 
I was like, all right, you know. It's, it, it, when that was my first realization of when your favorite brand, when your favorite band splits up, it doesn't mean the world has to suck. And they did that, and you know, and they were around till fucking maybe a couple years ago. But you know, they kind of came and went. They had some kind of dry spots. So they didn't put out music. And then after that came what ultimately ended up being one of my favorites in the genre. Uh, there are others, of course, to mention, like minor mentions, like Black Comedy, uh, Elidians, etc. But fucking Cybreed came and changed everything for me and for a lot of us. Um, Cybreed took the formula that Fear Factory made great and made it even better. Uh, it sounds like absolute blasphemy to a Fear Factory fan. I'm sure my Fear Factory fan friends are going to be like, get the fuck out of here. But Cybreed took what Fear Factory did and made it better. They um, had even groovier groove rhythms, uh, even tighter drumming. Uh, what they did that I kind of felt like made things better to me was there was more of an infusion of the electronics in a more creative manner where in Fear Factory the, the electronics felt like an afterthought whereas in Cybreed it felt like it was part of its, it was part of the home theme of the whole thing. Uh, it was this music for a cold, harsh, robotic reality. Uh, Cybreed stuff, while it's very catchy and very melodic, it felt even more cold and more sterile, more like the kind of music that would be for a robotic future. Uh, as well as what they did with the rhythm sections, which I thought was really special. The way they would kind of do these things where they would like, it would be very memorable and catchy, but the way that they would break up the rhythms in the, in the drumming and stuff, the way it would kind of crunch up this way and then switch up, uh, really kind of kept you feeling like you could bounce to the rhythm of it, but you would just constantly feel jolted back and forth. It was just so fucking energetic. Um, there are many great drummers that played in Cybreed to mention. Dirk Verburen, amongst one of them, I think, recorded on at least one of the albums. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it's, it's sad. This is one of my favorite bands. I can't think of the exact names of the members, but whoever did the drumming for the rest of Cybreed stuff, just a fucking great drummer. Uh, the stuff that he did beyond that, I believe... He was in Breach the Void and Nakaruga. Breach the Void, side note, it's kind of like Cybreed, but if it had the dude from Linkin Park singing, sound and style. I actually like it. I don't even like Linkin Park, but I like that band. That was cool. A lot of you won't like that because it's maybe a little too catchy and clean for you, and I get that. But, you know, if you want the heavier side of it, after that, he formed Nakaruga. I don't know if it's still active at this point. Nakaruga is kind of just more of a heavier. It's like Cybreed, but maybe. I don't even know if there is clean vocals in that Nakaruga album or not. But... I don't even know if they're still active anymore, and it just really felt like there's this, this void in my life. It's like, man, you know, I've gone on and I've listened to more different genres, but I don't listen to industrial metal as much as I used to. This is not that much current relevant stuff coming out anymore. And then this morning, you know, I found this video. Jesus Christ, we're rattling 12 minutes into this. I found this fucking video, and what's the name of this goddamn man? Please forgive me, guys. I just discovered you this morning, so I can't remember things. I don't know how the fuck I remember anything. Anyway. So the band is called Cypcore, and I found Cypcore this morning, and holy shit, like at first I was like, I was a little off put by the imagery and the name and stuff, but it took about 30 seconds of music for me to realize I was wrong. Uh, these guys do everything that Cybreed does, and they do it great. And the one thing that they bring to the table that Cybreed doesn't is the imagery, because Cybreed just dressed like dudes, and that was perfectly fine, and Cybreed were just great as they were. But Cybercore, they wear, like, fucking glow-in-the-dark robot armor and shit. And that's awesome. And it's not just, like, a gimmick, because if, like, it would just be these dudes in robot armor and the music was subpar, who gives a fuck? I wouldn't be sitting here making a video reminiscing about the last 20 years of my life. But the thing is, like, the, the armor and the, and the theatrics, that's just the cherry on the Sunday. But they have everything sound-wise that I appreciated with Cybreed. The vocals are a little bit different. It's the same vocal style. But I almost feel like the vocalist of Cypcore has almost like a... It sounds like Cybreed when he's screaming, but when he sings, the cleans are almost like Corey Taylor. Like old Slipknot type stuff for his cleans. And I'm totally cool with that. I can't stand Slipknot now, but I did like the first couple Slipknot albums. And it's definitely a welcome addition. I have zero problems with anything in Cypcore sound. Like everything is perfect. Everything in there is perfect just the way it is. And I couldn't get any luckier because it looks like, fortunately, these guys are about to put a new album out. Um, it's in pre-order. I'm going to have to get it. It kills me, but I, I have to support this. It doesn't kill me. I mean, you know, bills are getting paid, and if I have extra fun money, I'm going to throw it at amazing artists and musicians such as these guys. And this is going to be my, my grab of the next week is their upcoming album because it's in glorious fucking yellow vinyl. Uh, I definitely want to support these guys. Um, 
I hope that they see this video and that they like this video. Because uh, I'm going to do, whenever I get that fucking album when it comes over here, I'm going to do a re video review of it. Because the songs I've heard from the promotional stuff are even more awesome than the shit from their last album. Because, like, I sat here this morning and I listened to all of the last album and I listened to the single. I think there's, a, there's at least one single off this new one. And it's pretty fucking great. So, I have great feelings about these guys going forward. I, I anticipate talking about them a lot and listening to them a lot. Shit's fucking awesome. There's going to be a link. Hey guys, if you're watching this, um, I really suggest that you put your stuff on Bandcamp if it's not too much of an imposition for you. The reason I say that is for my friends that are on Bandcamp, it seems to be a really good way to support you, the artists, uh, as well as it makes it much easier for me to share to people. Uh, I have a lot of problems sometimes with YouTube sharing it with my friends and family in other countries with like restrictions and shit. Uh, I don't know if your videos have restrictions on them, so that may not be relevant to you. Um, but Bandcamp is a great way for a lot of us to buy your digital album, even if we can't get the hard copy. I'm going to do what I can to support you guys, because you're fucking awesome. But uh, I, rec I recommend at least checking out Bandcamp. Uh, hopefully it might be a good experience for you, because it is actually paying my other friends who are in bands. They're, they're making money off of it. It may not be amazing money, but it's more than bullshit fucking Spotify. And I want you guys to get paid. I want your bills to be paid, so you can continue this as a job and make more great music, because you, I think, are going to fill that void for me that Cybri left. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for making this awesome music. I hope you're watching. Bye.